Welcome to the Summer School Series on Leadership Rediscovered. That this whip might be a fun little series to do. When I think about summer school, I think there's two ways we can look at summer school. There is the remedial kind where maybe you failed a class or got a little bit behind and needed to take the class again in the summer to catch up. That is not the kind of summer school I'm talking about here today. What I'm thinking about is when you take classes in the summer to help you get ahead for what's coming next. So I used to take a few classes in the summer, sometimes when I was in college, just to make my fall semester a little bit lighter or a little bit easier or to prepare me for a more successful school year. And so that's the kind of summer school that I want us to be thinking about in this series. So for the next several episodes, I'm going to be sharing specific topics related to things I get asked to talk about a lot from a coaching perspective or a consulting perspective, things that I deliver a lot of training sessions on. And it's really an opportunity for us just to deep dive into one topic. And it's focused on something that might be relevant or helpful to you wherever you are in your leadership and career journey. And I hope you enjoy this summer school series. And if you have any ideas on topics you want us to cover, by all means, reach out and I'm more than happy to do so. The first of our summer school series sessions is going to be focused on what I call the summer slumpies. Are you, by chance, experiencing a case of the summer slumpies? Now, if you're curious what I mean when I say summer slumpies, it's just a general lack of motivation or desire to work really hard or work really long hours during the summer months. And when I think about the summer slumpies, what first comes to mind as to why I may get the summer slumpies or other people may get the summer slumpies is that, number one, I can't go a day on social media without seeing gorgeous pictures of people on vacation. They're at the beach. They look like they're eating and drinking well and having fun. And I think about being in a workplace and knowing that you have coworkers going in and out of vacation. Number one, when you see those pictures, mentally, I feel like we automatically go to vacation and wish wish that we were in vacation mode. But then number two, from a team perspective, it can be really disruptive, especially when you're trying to plan projects and tasks and meetings. And it's like, well, this person's out this week and that person's out next week. And so it starts to impact productivity levels and it can really get in the way of your flow from a disruption perspective when you're trying to get work done. So I think that is one scenario that can really impact our overall motivation and productivity levels. It always makes me laugh when I see memes about the fact that nothing gets done basically the last four weeks of the year every year because of holidays. And I think that kind of happens again in the summer months, particularly around the 4th of July for those of us who are in the U.S. It's just there's so many people that are on vacation. The whole week is just kind of like a joke in terms of getting work done. And like I said, it impacts motivation levels. And I think when you see other people who are out there vacationing, you start to get jealous of them. You want to be on vacation. And that just kind of starts a whole thought process in your brain that takes you away from work. The other thing that I think impacts us from a summertime perspective and causes some of the summer slumpies is just the wonderful season that summer is. Now, I know I'm a little bit biased. Summer is my favorite season of the year, but there's just a lot more opportunities to do fun things. It's warmer. It stays lighter longer. There's just so many things. You can go to the lake or maybe go to the beach, go get an ice cream cone, play golf, play tennis, play pickleball, all kinds of outdoor activities, go for walks and take the dogs out. And there's just so much to do that I think when you're sitting inside an office building or even sitting inside your house, you just feel that gravitational pull to want to go outside and want to be in the sunshine and the warmth and do something fun. I mean, when it's in the dead of winter and it gets dark at four o'clock in the afternoon, I think we're like, well, might as well work. What else am I going to do? So the very seasonality of the weather and the bright and warmth of the summer sun, I think also can cause some of the summer slumpies and get in the way of us really being focused on being productive and getting a lot of work done. And when we think about the summer slumpies, really, this is just tied back to motivation. And that's what I want to narrow in on for this episode. It's just understanding a little bit more about motivation 
and how we can impact our motivation levels and influence them in a positive way so that we can get more work done. Now, something that I talk about quite a bit is the motivational triad. And I think it's something that it's important for all of us to be aware of. At the very, very most basic parts of our brain, we are wired to seek out three main things. And those things are seek pleasure, avoid pain, and conserve energy. So those are massive core motivators for our brain, seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, conserving energy. So if you think about what I just talked about with the seasonality of summer, there's a lot more pleasure opportunities in the summer. There's a lot more fun things to do. I mean, there's a lot more opportunities to go to ice cream places. A lot of them aren't even open in the wintertime, which breaks my heart. So lots more opportunities, even focused just on the seeking pleasure component of the tribe. But then you also have avoiding pain and conserving energy. And I think sometimes if we feel like, well, I'm not even going to get anything done this week anyway because nobody's in the office or this one person I need to make a key decision on is out of the office on vacation, that forces our brain a little bit into the conserving energy perspective as well. So be aware at the core of our motivation levels, our brain is constantly looking for opportunities to either seek pleasure, avoid pain, conserve energy, or all three. Now, luckily, we have newer parts of our brain that can allow us to turn up the motivational levels every once in a while. And that takes us into a deeper layer of understanding some other components of motivation. So you may have heard the concept of intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation. And intrinsic motivation is something that's internally rewarding or internally validating. So these are rewards that create outcomes that satisfy your basic psychological needs. It covers things like autonomy, mastery, and purpose, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then extrinsic rewards or extrinsic motivators have to do with things that are externally rewarding or validating. So it could be things like money, fame, power, or even avoiding consequences as an example. So when I think about intrinsic motivation, this is generally people who might be motivated by rewards that they find more internally validating, such as the sense of pride or accomplishment that we feel by doing a good job completing something. It could be the joy or connectedness or belonging that happens when we're a part of a team and that we're contributing to something that's bigger than ourselves. And those good feelings impact our levels of psychological safety and really contribute to those intrinsic rewards. And then some of us are also motivated by extrinsic rewards, and that could be cash, that could be recognition, power, status. Any opportunities that are kind of like carrots that are out there dangling for us to go after as we try to achieve our goals. Now, most of us are motivated by a combination of both intrinsic and extrinsic rewards, although we might have, we might lean one way or the other. And it's also important to note that while extrinsic rewards can be really helpful, those typically aren't things that are as long lasting and sustainable as intrinsic rewards. So intrinsic rewards I mentioned earlier contains things like autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And those are all concepts that are covered by Dan Pink in the book that he wrote called Drive. And there's a fascinating video out there on YouTube that I highly encourage you to watch. That's a nine-minute synopsis of this book, Drive. But basically, there was a lot of research that's been done around motivation and what truly motivates people to work hard. And is it what's formerly or commonly known as the carrot and the stick method, which is punishment versus financial rewards, or is it something else? And in that book and also that video that you can watch online, DM Pink talks about the fact that extrinsic rewards are helpful in the short term. So if I know that I just need to knock out a few extra things in order to get a cash bonus, maybe I'll be doing it. And especially if I don't feel like I'm paid appropriately. But those longer term sustainable rewards are the things that keep us showing up day in and day out. And autonomy, as an example, that's an opportunity for us to be self-directed, independent, have control over the decisions that we make and ultimately our destiny. Mastery, those are opportunities for us to get better and improve and master something, which is why you have people who spend hours and hours a day 
playing pickleball, learning how to play the guitar, doing all kinds of different things that maybe aren't work-related and they're not being compensated for necessarily, but it's the thrill of being able to master something that motivates them and drives them. And then purpose is all about being a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And you're probably hearing about that more and more because it's very common in the workplace to be focused on purpose. But thinking about opportunities where you can contribute to something, a bigger project, a bigger organization, something that when you join forces with others will allow you to have a greater impact than what you could have just on your own. And as we think about these intrinsic and extrinsic rewards, I want us to think about the autonomy, the mastery, the sense of purpose, that all falls in that intrinsic category. And then the extrinsic category could be something like, the promise of a bigger salary or a cash bonus. And I want us to be aware of that because a lot of times that is a hook for us to make decisions from a work perspective. And I can certainly understand why. In the moment, it can be very thrilling. If I if I know that going to work for another company, I'm going to get X amount of dollars more a year or maybe a $30,000 sign-on bonus, whew, that's a game changer for me and my family. And that's awesome. That's great. If that's your pure motivation for taking that job, But once that sign-on bonus gets deposited and then spent, because usually people don't just store it away for a rainy day, it's used to pay off debt or buy something that you really need. Once that transaction has happened, it's not as motivating anymore. You still have to show up to that job day in and day out. And suddenly that sign-on bonus or that perfect salary really isn't as much of a hook for us in terms of getting us out of bed each morning and getting motivated. And so I just think it's important to be aware of what we tend to lean towards in terms of those intrinsic versus extrinsic motivations. And are we in a situation where we're really able to take advantage of some of those more internally validating opportunities? And because people are motivated by different things, I think it's really important that you take some time to think about what is it that motivates you. Think about your best day at work or the best job you've ever had, the best opportunity that you've ever been given, the best workplace that you've ever been a part of, the best leader that you've ever worked for. And think about why it was so great. Why all of those situations, opportunities, what made those things so great? What was that great day about? What was that great year about? That great job, that great company, that great leader? Start looking for patterns across what made those things so great for you. And I like to to steal the best day at work from my friend Morgan O'Brien. He shared with me that when he attends retirement parties for his employees, he asks them what was their best day at work. And he said what was really interesting is because when he asks that question, it's not often, oh, the day I got a bonus or a gift card or a free turkey at Thanksgiving. It's things like I had an opportunity to help someone. I was able to use the gifts that I have. And so I've found myself starting to ask these questions too when I go into organizations to do training or coaching. And it's really interesting because when you start asking that question, you can learn a lot about what motivates someone and what their true factors of motivation are. And again, a lot of times it has to do with making a difference, making an impact, and those things might contribute to the best days versus opportunities where you may have gotten a bonus or something financially rewarding for you. So take some time, think back. Hopefully you're currently in the best job, best boss, best scenario possible for you. But if you're not, think about what made those opportunities great and start looking for some patterns. Some other things that can really impact motivational levels that I want you to be aware of, I'm just going to pop through a list of a few of them. Certainly money, yes, of course. We all have to provide for ourselves and potentially others. So yes, money can be rewarding, but really only to the point where people are paid well enough to take it off the table. From there, some other things that really impact our motivation levels are clear expectations So knowing what's expected of us at work, and for those of you listening who are leaders, this is huge. This is an opportunity that you have to play a role in your team's motivation level. So setting clear expectations, providing regular feedback and praise or receiving regular feedback and praise. Here's a big one. Remove 
obstacles. I cannot tell you how often I hear people talk about significant obstacles that they have to getting their work done. And oftentimes they'll say, well, I've tried to tell people, but they won't do anything about it. They're not interested in making it better. And what they're telling me is they don't care about me. And caring is a huge piece about whether we're motivated at work or not. If we feel like people care about us, whether it's our boss, our team, hopefully all of the above, that has a significant impact on our motivation level. Because if I feel like people don't care about me, then I'm probably not as inclined to want to work really hard for them. It's, it's human nature if I don't feel like I have that mutual trust and respect with the other people that I'm working with. Something else that impacts our motivation levels is interesting work. So I think it's important to think about, especially if you're feeling your motivation levels being a little bit low, what type of work are you doing right now? Is it giving you an opportunity to master something new or be challenged a little bit? I think sometimes we think we prefer easy work. But honestly, the research shows that when we are that fully in our comfort zone, it's not that motivating for us. We need a little bit of a challenge. We need a little bit of a stretch. If something is super easy to do, we're not as inclined to feel motivated to do it. So having interesting work and then also being challenged a little as well as an an opportunity to learn and grow new things. And then Being inspired, that's another huge component. Are you in a situation where you feel inspired, where you feel like you're contributing to a worthy cause, that you're making a difference? And as leaders, we have to sometimes do a good job and a better job of making that connection for the folks on our team. So those are all some things that can impact our motivation levels. And I want you to think about as you're identifying moments of time where you've had really high motivation levels and then maybe lower motivational levels, trying to figure out what the root cause is for both. We want to study ourselves a little bit to learn about how we are motivated. Something that I think is also important to keep in mind and consider is that motivation levels do not stay consistent. There are going to be days that you wake up and you're feeling great and you have a lot of motivation to tackle what's in front of you. And then there's also going to be days where you're just not feeling it. And I say, give yourself some grace because that's normal. That happens. And there's a lot of factors that go into that. So the most important piece about that is just being aware of it, recognizing those days that you wake up and you're like, hmm, I'm just not feeling it. And When you have those days, I think it's important to, again, number one, notice them, be aware of them. But then number two, think about why. And it could be related to so many different things, but overall well-being has a huge part in it. So how much sleep did you get? And how much sleep do you need to be at your best level? How's your nutrition working out right now? Are you fueling yourself in the best way? Are you moving? Are you getting exercise? Are you keeping your energy levels high? How's your mental health? And speaking of mental health, how are the relationships? What's the quality of relationships in your life like? And believe it or not, all those things impact how you show up day in and day out and how you're feeling. So it's really important to do a quick check in all areas of your life. How are you feeling? And then how could that potentially be impacting your motivation levels and specifically at work. But again, give yourself some grace and pay attention to the number of days. What I think is more important is not so much saying, oh, being down on yourself if you're having a down day from a motivation perspective, that happens. But when every day you wake up and it's a down day or you're having more non-motivated days, the motivated days, and you're starting to notice a pattern, that's something that you want to pay some closer attention to and really explore. Because if you're starting to really struggle and have what some people call the Sunday blues or the Sunday scaries, where the thought of going back to work on Monday is really distressing for you, then that's something that's worth exploring and thinking about why that might be. And you can go down so many rabbit holes with that. But let's say you're in a situation where you're just really not looking forward to going to work. And I get it. I mean, work, it's a job, but 
you do get paid. And and keep in mind, as a side note, as a business owner, I would just like to remind everyone who works for business owners that you are getting paid to do a job. So the expectation of your employer is that your motivation levels are going to be high every day because they want to get the most return on their investment. So just wanted to create a quick diversion there to say, be aware of those motivation levels because if you're having a sustained period of low motivation, it is going to impact your work. It is going to impact your performance. And I don't want you to go down that road because that's not a great road to be on. So if we're finding ourselves in a situation where we're consistently not motivated, not in a good headspace about work, I think we need to take the time to really explore what is causing you to feel unmotivated about your job. And again, so many directions that we can go into with this, but it could be an issue of you don't like the actual work that you're doing. Perhaps you don't like the people that you work with, and maybe you don't have a strong sense of community or relationships with them. Maybe you don't get along with your boss and there's a mismatch in a style there. I've talked a lot on this podcast about Clifton Strengths, and that is a super helpful tool. It's an assessment that you can take that ranks 34 talent themes for you and then provides some insight in terms of areas of natural talent for you. And if you can focus and invest on those talents and turn them into strengths, the research shows that people who are working in their strength zone are 60% or more. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. If people who are working in their strength zone 60% or more of the time are far more likely to be engaged and productive in their work, and it even overflows into their satisfaction with their personal life too, their overall happiness. So working in your strength zone 60% or more of the time results in you being far more likely to be engaged and productive in your work, and that has a positive impact for your employer, and it also has a positive impact for you personally. So if you don't know what your strengths are, check out the assessment. And if you do, think about, are you operating in a place of your strengths? Are you able to leverage the strengths that you have 60% or more of the time? Are you working on things that light you up and get you excited? And do you know what those things are? And if the answer to that is no, I'm only going to use my strengths 20% of the time or 30% of the time, then that's something to be aware of. Maybe this is not the right role for you. And that doesn't mean you have to just suddenly quit your job and leave and go somewhere else. But think about, do you have the ability to influence that in your current role? Are there opportunities for you in your role, in your current environment, team, organization, where you can potentially do different work that does align better with your strengths and leverages your strengths. And if the answer to that is no, then okay, maybe start thinking about making a change because that sustained, continued lack of motivation is definitely going to have an impact on your performance. And again, I do not want you to go down that road. So it's really important to think about how you can manage that. Some other questions that you can ask yourself is, am I really being challenged? Am I really being stretched? Am I really going out of my comfort zone? And I know sometimes we want that easy work. We think we want to be in our comfort zone, but we're really not doing our best work when we're in that scenario. So thinking about looking at those patterns on what has created success for you in the past And then I also think just take a look at your to-do list right now and what's going on in terms of what's on your plate. Are you super overwhelmed? Sometimes that can really shut people down. And if you are feeling overwhelmed or maybe you're potentially experiencing some burnout, then what are the things that you need to do to get some control and influence over your situation? Maybe you can talk to your manager Make sure they're aware of all the things that you do have on your plate. See if there's opportunities to get some support so that you don't feel so overwhelmed. If you're in a leadership role, are you delegating enough? Some of our leaders have issues with that. There's a lot of different questions we can be asking ourselves about the actual work that we are doing and how we're getting it done and how that is impacting our overall motivation levels. If you've been engaging in a lot of repetitive tasks or you feel like you're stagnating, that can impact your motivation levels as well. 
So that's something important to look at. If you've been in, if you're working in too repetitive of tasks, it can get to the point where it's just like, oh, Groundhog's Day. Here we go again. Something else that I think is really interesting is I was reading a book and they were talking about fear in organizations and essentially consequences. And thinking about especially being rewarded from an extrinsic perspective by positive rewards, that can be things like a pat on the back or a gift card or money. But sometimes those extrinsic rewards are actually the avoidance of consequences. So maybe I'm motivated to work because I don't want to get in trouble or I don't want something bad to happen. And believe it or not, if we have zero consequences to our behavior, if we're not being held accountable in any way for the work that we're doing, or it's very minimal, that's actually not motivating for us to get anything done either. Because you kind of feel like, what's the point? If, if it's not a big deal, if I don't do this, nobody's watching, nobody cares, nobody's paying attention, doesn't even matter if I do a good job, nobody's going to hold me accountable. My work doesn't make a difference here. It doesn't matter. Those are all things that are going to impact your motivation levels as well. So if you're operating in a space with little to no consequences, that can impact performance. And be aware for those of you listening who are in leadership roles, leaders of people, that is, make sure that you are creating accountability systems so that people recognize not that they're afraid because we want people to thrive in their roles, but they recognize that there is an expectation that people will deliver on what they've committed to do. Another thing that I'd like to say for our leaders who are listening is that be aware a common motivating factor is having a manager that cares about them and know that Research by Gallup shows leaders account for 70% of the variance in employee engagement. So if there are individuals on your team who are not operating at high levels of performance, who are not acting motivated, be aware that it could be related to your leadership style. Ooh, I know. Tough love here. Summer school. Maybe it does feel remedial at this point. <laughs> Again, we are all responsible for our own motivation. It is not a leader's job to force motivation on someone else. But as leaders, we are responsible for things as well as it relates to motivation. And that includes creating conditions where people can thrive and be at their best and bring their best selves to work every day. So I would ask you, are you creating the right type of environment for people where they feel cared for? invested in, and supported? Have you talked to your team about what obstacles might be getting in the way of them being successful in their job? Have you had conversations about their motivation? How are you feeling? What are you excited about working on right now? What are you not so excited about? What do you enjoy the most about your job? What do you enjoy the least about your job? You can ask that beautiful question that I love to ask, knowing what you know about your job now, if you were applying and interviewing for this job, would you still want the job? You got to be ready for the answer to that question, by the way. That's a that's a pretty deep question, but you could get a lot of information out of it if you ask that question. So think about learning more about any frustration that exists amongst your team related to barriers to getting their work done, because I can't tell you how much that impacts people's attitude at work and their overall motivation levels. If they come into work and everything's a hassle and everything's a challenge, they just become so easily frustrated that they don't want to try anymore. They just give up. So we got to make sure that we're talking to our employees on a regular basis to find out how they're doing, how they're feeling, and are they able to get their work done effectively? And if not, what's getting in the way? Because it is our job as leaders to identify those obstacles and barriers and remove them so that our team can ultimately be successful. So we've covered a lot about motivation, but hopefully it's given you an opportunity to just reflect a little bit on how your brain motivates you. What are the things that are most important to you? Is it financial rewards? Is it staying out of trouble? Is it things like autonomy, mastery, purpose? And how are you feeling right now? What are your motivation levels? And if they're, they're good, great. Why are they high? And how, what can we do to keep those motivation levels high? And if they're not, what's going on there? What's the story behind it? And what are some things that we need to do 
in order to bring up those motivation levels so that you can be productive and successful in the work that you do.